morning, Victory Kids! Welcome to V Kids Online. We are so excited to have you join us today. Woo, yeah! Is everyone ready to have some great stories and fun? Awesome, so am I. So let's start off with some awesome singing and dance moves. Woohoo! Yeah, let's go get our worship on. Woo -hoo. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. Let us be. 
Okay, Lisa, we've got 10 days into the first week. I'm at 40 minutes, but today, that's going to change. I'm going to beat the girls from Central. This year, this year, I'm finally, finally going to make state. And it all begins here at the first dance. There you are. We have been looking everywhere for you. Lisa, where have you been? Have a talk with us. These things are so good. Not right now, guys. I have to run. Run? Who's making you run? Nobody. But I have to be ready for the first meet. That's 10 days from now. Yeah, but I have to be ready. Says who? Your coach? I don't see any coaches. Relax. Chill out. Have a taco. They do smell really good. Don't they? We got them from Viva Taco Food Truck. That's my favorite place in town. Re come on. Relax. There's no coaches around. It's just me, you, and Jamie. And tacos. Oh, yes. And tacos. Well, I guess one won't hurt. That's a girl take one. Go on, how about it? No, I can't do it. I gotta stay on my diet. I gotta keep practicing. Chicken. Wait, I thought we got all beef. Sorry guys, but I gotta run. Can you believe her? It's like we were trying to make her do something really bad. You know, maybe she's right. Maybe I need to stop eating tacos and run too. The next season starts in four weeks, and I've got to be in good shape. Pam, you're not runner. You're on the chess team. I know, but do you know how embarrassing it is to get winded up playing chess? Yes! Oh, hey, you're back. I hope you enjoyed the worship. I know that I did. But hey, have you ever noticed the weird commercials that come on when the Olympics or a sports season comes around? Yeah, I have. But to be honest, there are many strange events in the Olympic Games. You got that right. Like the Winter Olympics. It gives us the bizarre sports of curling and ice dancing. Ooh, and you know the Summer Games? They give us strange and wild sports like handball, race walking, water polo, and synchronized swimming. <laughs> oh my oh, goodness. I know, so strange. But do you know what makes these weird sports look normal? No. What? It's the commercials. Yeah, those commercials can be pretty strange. Especially the ones from McDonald's. Yeah, so you see these Olympic figures sitting down or enjoying chicken nuggets and Big Macs. Wait, that's strange. No top athlete mm -hmm. is ever in their right mind going to eat those type of foods before a game of competition. Especially runners. Right? Yeah, no runner is going to down a quarter pounder just before a big race. Yes, they know that they need to keep a strict diet and only set foods in their stomachs that will fuel their bodies the best way. And that means saying no to Outback Steakhouse and saying, staying home instead and eating a salad. That's true. We can sure learn a lot from these disciplined runners when it comes to temptation. Yes, we can. And as Christians, God wants us to avoid those things that cause us to sin. He wants us to run from places and people that are likely to cause us to stumble. Let's go see Miss Sylvia. She has a message that she would love to share with us all. Oh, she does. I love special messages from our other Victory Kids Me teachers. Too. Let's go. Let's go. Hey, Victory Kids. How many of you are playing sports already? Right? Those of you playing sports, what do you think of the food we brought in today? Huh? We've got cookies and cheeses and caramels and cheesy poofs and oh, my favorite barbecue potato chips. Oh my goodness. So, is this the kind of thing that you should be eating during soccer season or basically any kind of sport? Right? What do you guys think? Uh, no. No, I don't think so. As you guys grow older, you're going to hear your coaches talk more and more about nutrition right? They're going to tell you to eat good foods and skip the junk. Skipping the junk isn't easy, especially when everyone around you is doing it. But you want to succeed in sports, you have to learn to ignore peer pressure and eat right. God knows it's hard to avoid peer pressure. It's even harder to resist. We all have a desire to be loved and fit in. But God wants us to be wise and never, ever 
give in and compromise what we believe for the sake of fitting in. When something isn't right, we need to speak up. We need to be bold and point people to doing what's right. And if no one will listen, we need to be prepared to go against the flow and do what's right. Go. No. Running may not be easy or popular, but when you're willing to run, God is willing to protect us. Be prepared to run if your friends try to talk you into doing something that you know God doesn't want you to do. Okay? She's in the way. Be ready to stand up. And if necessary, be ready to run. Ah! <laughs> Have a great day, guys. Jesus loves you and so do we. Ah! Bye. That was a great message. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Miss Sylvia, for sharing with us. Yeah, I need to find the strength and be bold to run away from peer pressure. In 1 Corinthians 10.13, in the English Standard Version, it says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape. That you may be able to endure it. Wow, I am so thankful that God will help us by providing a way out from the temptation. Absolutely. In today's Bible story, we will learn about a boy who would save his family. Wow, and it all started when that boy's brothers decided to kill him. But thank God, yes. there was another brother who was able to stop it. Let's see what happens. B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I sit alone on the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E.
the Faithful Hall of Fame, Joseph. So this is Joseph. Hey! You see, Joseph was the son of Israel and Rachel. Israel loved Joseph more than all 12 of his sons. In fact, he made Joseph a coat to show him how much he loved him. <laughs> when Joseph's brothers saw this, they hated Joseph. <laughs> One night, Joseph had a dream. When he awoke, Joseph told the dream to his brothers. He said, listen to this dream I had. We were gathering grain when suddenly my bundle of grain rose up and all of you bowed to me. This made his brothers hate Joseph even more. And they said, you're gonna rule over us? <laughs> then Joseph had another dream. And he told it to his brothers and his father. He said, listen, I had another dream. And this time, the sun and moon and 11 stars were bowing down to me. This time, Israel heard the dream and rebuked Joseph, saying, Will your mother and brothers and I actually come and bow down before you? The brothers were even more angry when they heard the second dream. Israel, however, decided to think about what Joseph was saying. One day, Joseph's brothers were working when they saw Joseph coming to meet them. One of his brothers mocked him and said, here comes the dreamer. Come on now, let's kill him and throw him away to be devoured by a ferocious animal. Then we'll see what comes of his dreams. One of the brothers named Reuben wanted to rescue Joseph, so he said, let us not take his life. Instead, throw him in the pit. Yeah. So when Joseph came to his brothers, hey. they attacked him. Yeah. They took the robe their father had given Joseph. They hoisted Joseph up and threw him into the well. Uh. Then they saw a group of men from Midian coming towards them. Judah thought it would be a good idea to sell Joseph to these men. So the brothers sold Joseph to the merchants for 20 shekels. The brothers then took the coat of many colors back to their father and made him believe that Joseph had been killed. Israel wept for his son, whom he loved. Meanwhile, Joseph was taken as a slave to Egypt to work in the house of a man named Potiphar, for Joseph's story was only just beginning. Wow, I find it hard to believe that 10 out of 11 brothers all wanted to see Joseph die. And I'm so glad that there was at least one who was willing to speak up. Yes, me too. And because of Reuben's courage, mm -hmm. Joseph lived to fulfill the promise God had made on his life. That's right. Do you have that same kind of courage? As you grow older and head into middle school, high school, or college, you're going to need it. You really will. Reuben could have gone against his brothers and told them to leave Joseph alone and to do the right thing. But he didn't want his brothers teasing or hating him, too, for helping Joseph. That's right. Reuben only had half the courage he needed to spare his brother many years of suffering. What about you? Are you ready to face the temptations coming your way? Really? You are? If your best friend said, let's go skip school, would you go? Oh, what if they offered you a chance to do drugs? What Ooh. would you say? What if they invited you to a party Ooh. that you're not allowed to go to and mm. you didn't tell mom and dad? Would you still go? Wow, that's really not easy. Really, really not easy to say no to our friends. No, it's not. Saying no can mean getting teased or even worse, rejected. Oh, rejection. No one wants to feel that loneliness that comes with being rejected by our no. friends. But in the end, what's more important? Is it fitting in with our friends and following the wrong crowd? Or is it pleasing our Heavenly Father and choosing the right path? Wow, I don't know. Maybe even giving someone else the courage to say no as well. Absolutely. 
God is calling you to stand up yes. against the flow and run from peer pressure. Yes, that's right. God was with Joseph and still led him to fulfill his life's mission. And he wants to do the same with you. That's right. Would you like that? Yeah? Okay. Then I'd like to ask you a question and make a decision that will change your life. Yes, would you like to make Jesus your savior? You would? Great! Yay! Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear God, Dear God, I know that I have made some bad decisions. I know I have made some bad decisions. And I would like to ask for your son Jesus. And I would like to ask for your son Jesus. Who died on the cross for my sins. Who died on the cross for my sins. To come into my heart. To come into my heart. And help me make the right decisions. And help me make the right decisions. In Jesus name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Yay, that is yes, so exciting. I know, so exciting. I love that. Is that, if that was your first time repeating that prayer or joining us today, then we would love for you to send us a message on our Victory Kids Facebook page and we will send you a gift welcoming you into our family. Absolutely. Kids, you're going to face many temptations in mm -hmm. the coming years from people that you call your friends. But no friendship is worth the pain or the loss of the reputation of, from if you sin. That's right. It has been such a great blessing having you all join us today. But now it's time to say goodbye. Oh, man. But before we do, we need to close out in prayer. All right, let's do it. Dear God, you are an amazing father yes. who is always there for us when we need you. Thank you for watching over us. Please help us to be strong so we can resist peer pressure. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Wow, goodbye kids, Bye. and always remember to guard your hearts for temptation. Yes. See y'all next, next week. week. Bye. Bye.